Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Julie Dawes. I am the PTA Program Coordinator at Kellogg Community College. I really appreciate you joining us today. I have a little bit of information I'd like to share with you about the Physical Therapist Assistant Program, but certainly would welcome any questions um, about the program or about the field of physical therapy, however we can help you. In addition to um, the presentation that I have for you, we also have several of the program students who are joining us. So they're gonna be available to give a little bit of their perspective about their experiences in the program and maybe answer questions and uh, anything that we can do to help you learn a little bit more about healthcare, about the careers available at KCC, about physical therapy, we're here to, to do those types of things. So I really appreciate everybody's uh, attention and, and certainly welcome those questions. So that being said, uh, physical therapist assistant, let's talk a little bit about the, the field of physical therapy. Some of you may be familiar with the idea that physical therapy is a health profession that's based on improvement of goals. And it's really focused on the patient. So whether they're having issues with uh, their ability to move with strength, with endurance, balance, coordination, whatever it is that we need to do to get people back to their previous activities or what we think about is back to their life. So if we're working with a football player, then we want to get them back on the field of play. If we're working with a person who uh, works as a mechanic or as a nurse, then we want to get them back to their their field and their job and being able to do those types of things. So it's kind of an opportunity to do a lot of diverse things and still help people. So in the field of physical therapy, there are uh, different types of jobs or different opportunities. So you can certainly become a physical therapist. That is my degree. I am a physical therapist. And if you chose that career path, that would currently require a doctoral degree. So you would need to go to a university and um, plan on spending about six years to get the uh, complete level of, of education. The average salary for a physical therapist as they are graduating is right around $88,000 a year. As a physical therapist assistant, that is an associate's degree um, profession. So here at KCC, that requires five semesters, just under two years, all total, um, depending on how you take the courses. The average salary for that then is right around $55,000 a year for those five semesters of, of education. So you can compare a little bit of the opportunities. And then the other job kind of related to physical therapy is that of a PT tech. And people who work in a clinic as a, as a tech are typically on the job trained. And so the, the wage for that would be somewhere around 12 to maybe $15 an hour, depending on the facility or the site. So a little bit about PTA at KCC. Uh, we're very proud of the fact that, that the KCC PTA program was the first one in Michigan. And in fact, it was the sixth program in the United States. So in 2019, we celebrated the 50th anniversary of the PTA profession. And that brings us to the idea that the PTA program and some of the other allied health programs are celebrating 50 years on campus this year. So. We're excited, not just about the PTA program being here for that long, but some of the other uh, health related programs have also had a long history here at KCC. Some other fun stuff, the US Department of Labor projects that there's gonna be continued growth about 26% in the profession through 2028. So this qualifies physical therapy, physical therapist assistant as a hot job career path, that there's opportunities and um, those types of things for people who are developing their career opportunities now. So what do PTAs like about their job? Well, many PTAs talk about the teamwork opportunity, working with other clinicians and healthcare professionals. So uh, occupational therapists, nursing, doctors, social workers, there's a complete healthcare team, including the patient and their families, helping them get back to their goals and the things that they really want to do. PTAs overwhelmingly say helping people get better. There's a lot of satisfaction in helping people 
recover from an injury, letting them get back to doing the things that they could do before. And it's quite rewarding to be part of that process. And certainly as patients get better, they have a level of appreciation and gratitude that they're grateful for all of the, that we're able to help them recover and the things that we're able to help them do, um, especially in their time of, of really feeling challenged and, and uh, having a difficult time. So what about the workplace? Where do physical therapy personnel work? And there's lots of different places with lots of different um, types of patients and backgrounds. So that's one of the awesome things about this job. As a PT, as a PTA, you know, there's a lot of diversity in the careers. If you like sports medicine, then there's opportunities there. If you like working with children, there's opportunities to do that. Physical therapy uh, utilizes sometimes horses. So if you have interest in, in animals and, and horses and that type of stuff, there's a branch of physical therapy that uses horses to help people recover. Certainly we work in places like hospitals and long-term care facilities, homes. There's, there's just a lot of opportunity in a lot of different places. In fact, even some of the casinos in Las Vegas have physical therapy clinics on site because it's more efficient for their employees to have access to those immediate types of services than have to leave their job and go other places. So really lots of opportunities and lots of diversity. And if you don't like one, you can go to another one. So um, pretty, pretty awesome in that standpoint. So what do you learn at KCC about being a PTA? And so really we can divide up the, the courses here at KCC into general education classes like English, psychology, anatomy, and then the technical PTA classes. So here's a kind of a rundown of the general education courses that are required to earn the degree of a PTA. So English and communications, introduction and developmental psychology, introduction to sociology, and of course, human anatomy and physiology. So individuals who are still in high school, you may be able to take advantage of dual enrollment type of opportunities to um, you know, prepare for a career in physical therapy or other health related fields. And so these would be some of the courses that you might be able to take advantage of here at KCC. Other requirements related to the PTA program? Well, depending on, on where you're coming from, first year seminar may be a requirement for you. Uh, one of the other cool things about the PTA program is that individuals who join the program will end up earning a nurse aid training certificate. That means that you could work as a SENA while you're going to school and earn a little bit of money and have some additional experience in healthcare. We also require CPR certification. So those are our other requirements as you complete the program. So what else do you learn at KCC about being a PTA? Well, the students learn about the bone. So on this slide, we see a picture of a patella or a kneecap and the other picture up there is your shoulder blade or what's known as the scapula. We learn about the ligaments. So on the left-hand side, that's an actual cadaver with a picture of the anterior cruciate ligament, a ligament that's often injured in sports-related injuries. And then we learn about the muscles, of course, um, how to help people recover from injuries related to that. There's a great deal of time spent with actually treating patients and understanding the pathologies, what's happened to them. So this individual certainly has suffered a pretty traumatic injury to their arm and there would be different ways that we could help this person uh, recover from this injury. We also learn about the nervous system. So about the brain and how nerves work we learned about the spinal cord. So um, this is a model of the spinal cord showing how we respond if we touch something hot unexpectedly, we would bring our hand back. Um, and all of that would happen at the level of the spinal cord before we even realized what had happened. So that's one of the other things that program students learn about the, the program and about the human body so that they can help patients. The program has well over 700 hours of clinical experiences. So after you learn all of the different things here on campus, then students have the opportunity to go out and practice those things with real patients in different settings so that they feel very, very prepared 
as they leave KCC and the PTA program. So here's some other examples of, of uh, different clinical sites. So doing different types of exercises, working with pediatrics. Certainly we work with patients who are also in a lot um, more compromised situation. So working with patients who really need a great deal of help. And certainly these individuals are very appreciative of anything that, that can be done to have them have their day be a little bit easier. Students here at KCC learn about being part of the team. So that's an important part of, of working together collaboratively. We learn about different types of equipment, wheelchairs, parallel bars, how to help patients depending on what their concerns or their issues are. We learn about um, different treatment techniques called modalities. This picture is of a device that uses things like sound energy, electric energy, and laser light energy to help patients recover from pain or different types of musculoskeletal problems. So all of those are things that you learn here while you're in the program. We learn about how to help individuals who maybe have suffered a limb loss. So how to do, work with prosthetics. And that does give another opportunity that if physical therapy isn't something that is something that really makes you um, energized, but maybe something like working with prosthetics, this is another career, career opportunity. There would be a branch from physical therapy, helping patients get better, but um, different technology and different things. So working with prostheses and those types of things. Certainly we learn other hands-on skills and then other hands-on techniques so that patients can get better. And here's some other examples of some advanced techniques, soft tissue, utilize, utilizing kinesio tape. So how do you prepare for a career in physical therapy? Well, for those of you who are still in high school, we really recommend taking courses related to math and science, as well as English communications or speech. Being able to communicate with a patient is really important. So sometimes we don't think about how important those types of courses are. We, we really um, recognize math and science is important, but also those English and communication skills are an excellent way to help prepare to be in healthcare in general. So what about personal characteristics? So if you like being part of a team, if you like to help people, if you're curious related to understanding and learning new things, then certainly this would be a great career opportunity for you. Um, those are things that probably most clinicians find in common. What about KCC? Well, certainly for many of those who are watching this presentation, it's close to home. We're also very happy about the fact that it's still an affordable option, that we do really pride ourselves on having both caring and accessible instructors. So we really try to help students um, during their journey. And you have the opportunity with smaller class sizes. So we get a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention. So again, a physical therapy and physical therapist assistant doesn't seem to be the best career path for you right now. There's some other related careers that even an individual who earned their degree as a PTA may go on. So we've had a number of students who have earned their physical therapist assistant degree here at KCC and have entered these different career fields. So there is uh, several PT programs in the state of or in the United States that recognize the career and the education of a PTA toward becoming a PT. And so uh, becoming a physical therapist is an opportunity. We've also, also had students go on and become chiropractors, physician assistants or a nurse practitioner, the orthotist or the prosthetist we talked about a little bit earlier, uh, massage therapy, personal training, athletic training, occupational therapy, all of those would be related careers. And so opportunities there that people may wanna consider or think about. So that kind of brings me to the end of the presentation about how can we help and what questions might there be out there related to the PTA program or physical therapy in general or any of the other health career fields here at KCC. Are there any questions out there right now? Can you hear me all right here? Sure. Oh, hi. So my name is Hunter Duke. I attend Jackson College right now. I just graduated from Litchfield High School in July. 
Um, and I was looking to transfer to Kellogg Community College in the spring. Um, so when applying for the PTA program, do you have to have those finished general education courses before you apply for the program or be accepted into the program? Sure. So the answer to that is no, you do not. Um, the KC PTA program does not have any prerequisites. But what happens is those courses um, are helping students related to the point system. So admissions to the PTA program is selective and it's based on points. There are generally more people who are interested in the program than there are open seats. And so the admissions system, or the admissions department uses a point system to determine who's invited into the PTA program. So the points are awarded for those different general education courses. So the more of those that you complete, then of course the more points you would have in the admissions process. And that would make it more likely that an individual would be invited into the program. With that being said, um, it's not necessary to have them all done. And some students are still working on some of those general education courses as they're entering the technical coursework. The other thing to be aware of is that the admissions process does have a um, two bonus point process for individuals who apply to the program and they're not invited into the program and they reapply on another year. Uh, so those two bonus points are also available for individuals who are continually interested in the program and interested in pursuing the degree. Now, one of our academic advisors is also on this Zoom meeting. So I'll let Caleb uh, add on if he has any other comments about anything I might have missed on that. No, that, that all sounds good. Uh, yeah, like Julie said, there's uh... There's no courses that need to be done ahead of time, but they do help for your admissions points. Um, we don't do any wait lists year to year. So, you know, ultimately we never really know what your odds are when you apply, like what's the minimum admissions points you need to get in that changes every year. So uh, we just wanna make sure that when you apply, you're putting your best foot forward. Um, there's also no risk to applying. It's a free application. So even if you feel like you don't have a lot of points, still apply, you know, you're not out anything. Um, and then like Julie said too, like we give you two bonus points for applying multiple years in a row. So uh, what I can do is on the chat is share the link to the admissions packet if you haven't checked it out, but that has like the admission requirements, those pre-courses that can be done and the point system. So you can all take a look at that, you know, when we're done. I can't see the chat. Are there any other questions? Um. I guess I had a, another question here. So I, I am in the Hillsdale Early Middle College program. So like I said, I take classes through JCC, but um, my high school is paying for the classes I take right now at JCC. Is there any, like, I guess, complications in trying to transfer as a early college student? Or is that, I guess, an easy process? Or <laughs> I'll let Caleb answer that question. He's the expert in that area. Yeah, good question. So uh, so if you're taking college credit at, like you said, Jackson College? Yeah. Uh, so even if you are still in high school, that's still college credit that's on your transcripts. There's no issue with that transferring as long as you earn a C or higher. So whether you're like a freshman in college or you know a junior in high school, it doesn't, it doesn't matter ultimately for that. Um, the credits can come in still. Now, if right. you haven't already done so, make sure you are meeting with an advisor, that's myself or my colleague, Summer Corsi, uh, just to make sure you're taking the right courses. Because sometimes a, uh, you might take like an essentials of human anatomy and physiology course, and then you realize that um, that transfers to KCC, but not as the full-blown human anatomy and human physiology course you need. So we would just wanna go through and make sure you're taking the courses there that will transfer into our program. Gotcha. That makes sense. Thank you so much. Any other questions, Hunter? Um, I'm trying to think. Um, I know I had more, and now I'm. <laughs> I had them all wrote down, and uh, let's see. So, for the, I guess this is another one for him as well. The human anatomy and physiology courses, I, unless I am understanding it wrong, I think 
Jackson College offers them as like a like a combined. I don't know how to explain it. Anatomy it's Physiology like, One and Anatomy Physiology Two. Yeah. yeah, and at Kellogg it offers it as two separate classes. Correct, or am I wrong to say that? You are correct. So that's another okay. common thing. Some schools do that. So KCC has a full human anatomy, and then the next class is full human physiology. Yep. Some colleges instead say, well, no, we're doing human anatomy or anatomy and physiology one, and the next semester is anatomy and physiology two. Uh, and at Jackson, that should be bio 253 and 254. So you can tell sure. I do this all the time. Um, <laughs> but uh, so basically what that means, we are still very transfer friendly for taking in those credits, but you wanna make sure that uh, you're taking both of them there. Because if you just take human anatomy and physiology one and try to transfer that credit in, you're essentially coming in with two halves of two different courses. And we can't really do anything with that. We can't give you credit for either. But if you take both of them there and then transfer them in, it shouldn't be an issue. Because one of the, the biggest obstacles I'm facing right now is with the online courses. And I wanted to be able to, you know, take those classes before I transferred, but I also didn't, I wasn't necessarily looking forward to trying to take them online, but I knew that it would be more points towards the program if I, if I transferred with them. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't sure, I don't know, is, is KCC, are they, are you guys offering in-class are in person classes right now, or is that? Uh, we started in person classes in the fall uh, that would transition to all virtual, except, you know, some, I bet, like, Julie, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe some of the PTA courses are still in person, correct? That is true, but we're, uh, we're limited. We have been given permission. Thankfully, KCC has been very good about recognizing the fact that some things are very, very difficult to offer appropriately. Um, in the online online venue, so um, and some of our students who are joining us on the Zoom meeting can probably share a little bit more about their experiences. And several of them have lived through the entire process related to going online very quickly and how we've managed through the through the process to get to where we are today. Um. So I guess my question about those, because I know those are, you know, two some crucial classes coming into the, the program. I guess I'm asking for a recommendation on how how I should go about completing those courses. Do you think it would be better to f try and finish those online, where I feel like I, I guess, I guess I struggle a little bit more with the online courses, or to eventually maybe be able to take those at Kellogg you know, in person that are available, I guess, if they're available? Um, I think to best answer that question, we should probably have an appointment and like look over your course history and talk about that. Um, Cause I don't want to just say anything off the cuff without looking at that. Cause a yeah. lot of that has to do with what kind of points you're already bringing to the table. And also um, like, for example, anything you're going to take like the spring or winter semester won't count for points for the fall 21 program. Cause the deadline's April 1st, they are going to score you right after that deadline and you're not going to have final grades. So if you're like, let's say you're really wanting to get your like physiology course done in spring and transfer it over, eh, you might not want to right now. If you're worried about taking it all online, um, it's not going to be giving you a leg up for the program, right? It's not going to be giving you bonus points. So um, there might be reason to push that off. So yeah, I, I would want to, again, look at your whole course history, kind of where you're sitting to give you the best advising on that. But what I will do is drop the advising office number in the chat too. So if you want to call that number when we're done, um, you can call them. They'll set you up right on my calendar. Um, if you don't remember my name, which is Caleb, just say PTA and uh, they'll, they'll put you with me. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much. No problem. Are there any other questions out there? So I know that um, Danny and Kayla, two of our second year students are on the call. Would one of you share a little bit about your experiences? Are you there, Danny? Yep, I am. Oh, hi, Danny. Hey, 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 how are you doing? I'm awesome. So Danny, t tell us a little bit, can you tell us a little bit about why you chose PTA and how things have gone related to COVID? And um, are you glad that you did? Well, I hope you're so glad. <laughs> Put me on the spot. Well, you know how it goes. Yeah. I 
anyway, so share a little bit with us, Danny, would you? Yeah, sure. Um, so initially, to be honest with you, actually, I am one of those applicants that that reapplied, and I was just really drawn to KCC because it was it was so close to home. And I'm actually from Lansing, but one of the closer and more reputable programs that I kind of did my research on. So I was just really stuck on going there. And I chose PTA because with, um, with my experience in the, the field of being a PT tech or even just doing internships and shadows at a clinic, um, I just thought it would be a better fit for me because my passion is more towards the fitness aspect of things. But being able to add that um, rehabilitative aspect to it um, would just make it a lot easier for me uh, to incorporate my passion into it as well. So when I kind of weighed my options with PT and PTA, I know earlier in the presentation you talked about cost. Um, that was a big factor into that as well. And um, knowing that there's other options to advance in the field down the road, it's not like I'm at a standstill or I'm stuck. Um, now in terms of doing school with COVID, that has been very interesting because everything's been kind of a um, an adjustment after another adjustment and things like that. Uh, so is life, you know, you go through the ebbs and flows, ups and downs, but learning how to adjust well, I will say um, successfully counts on the support system that you have. And I think the staff that um, the teaching staff, the professors, everybody there has been super supportive of that, super helpful in making sure that, you know, we're taken care of, we we're staying on top of things. Um, and even our classmates, like, I wouldn't want to do this with any other group, to be honest with you, because everybody's been super awesome and being able to, like, um, make this a team oriented task. Like, we want everyone to, to finish. We want everyone to, um, to continue to be successful. So I would say that's going to be the biggest um, help in anything that you're doing with this program is, is treating it like a family. Awesome. And Kaylee, you are now out in clinic. So tell us a little bit about your experiences in clinic. She may, you might have to unmute yourself, Kayla. <laughs> there you go. There we are. Oh, so, um, yeah, clinic's been really great so far. Um, what type of clinic are you in? I am an outpatient clinic. And so far, it's... I worked as an aide, you know, for a couple of years, and it's a little bit of a different atmosphere um, compared to what I'm working in. But um, COVID definitely changes things of that. Um, yeah, I've, so far I've been just working um, a lot with the patients, um, observing a lot. Um, my CI will ask me a lot of questions and sometimes I'll stick with one patient and then um, kind of run them through their exercises. And then my CI will uh, sometimes pull me aside and, you know, work on um, hands-on skills with another patient, so. Awesome. Why did you join the KCC PT program, Kayla? Um, I've heard for, for KCC, I've heard a lot of great things that they really prepare um, the students for the, the clinic, to, um, for the real world setting. Um, I actually um, got my bachelor's degree in exercise science. Um, in high school, I thought I actually wanted to be a PT. And um, if you don't know already that getting into PT school is very uh, competitive. So um, kind of went through, uh, you know, I was like kind of halfway through getting my bachelor's degree. I maybe realized that uh, getting into PT school was not going to be um, possible. So I was kind of stuck with a degree that I didn't know what I wanted to do with. So after graduating, um, got a job as an aide and kind of, took time thinking about what I really wanted to do and um, kind of confirmed that this is the career that I really wanted to go into. So um, I wanted to really help people. Um, I've been a patient at PT before, at a PT clinic before, and I know the frustration that comes with being injured and not 
being able to do what you want to do. So I wanted to get out there and help people. And plus I love learning about the human body. So I think it's just a great combination if you want to learn about um, how the body works. And if you want to help people, I think it's a great job. Awesome. So Stephanie, you're on the, on the Zoom meeting. Share with us a little bit about why you chose physical therapy and why you chose KCC. Um, I think I relate a lot to what Danny had said with um, having a passion for exercise and really helping people. And I was on the path for physical therapy for a while. And then after looking at PTA for a little bit, I know that Kellogg is a really great program for it. And it's, like I said, it's close to home. I live in Three Rivers, so I'm about 50 mm -hmm. minutes away, but it's really not that bad. Um, and I really like the aspect of like helping people and being able to see someone's outcome. Like I see a lot of um, instances with people who have surgeries, like really impacted surgeries where they feel like they'll never be able to walk again. But then you always hear those incredible stories from PTs and PTAs saying that they were able to be a part of that person's rehabilitation process and they were able to get them back to where they wanted. And I think that's really rewarding. What surprised you most so far? You've only been in the, in the program since September, so yeah. what surprised you the most? Um, I got to say the, there's, um, I don't know. Would you do anything different? Would I do anything different? Mm -hmm. Um, so far. I feel like, I think time management is a big part of this program. Um, I already have a really good um, aspect of time management, but this program really helps you with it. There's a lot of outside studies for this program, but there's a lot of teamwork involved with the class. Like for us, in instance, we had to split our class up into two groups. So I only have nine people in my group, I believe, which is kind of nice, but it kind of sucks because I don't really know the other half. But with the nine people that I know, Everyone is so close and really getting to the program is with the people that you know. Kind of the same sentiment that Danny shared. Yeah. I will say though, if I want to do anything different, no COVID for me, but. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second that notion, Danny. All right. I, I could just, you know, shut that down. It's caused a lot of sleepless nights for the, the faculty as well as the students, I'm sure. So <laughs> terrible. Any other questions out there? This has been a really great dialogue. I appreciate everybody's input. So I wanna make sure we address any other questions. And Caleb, is there anything that you have encountered with students who've come in that we should address on the call while we're here? Um, I think everything for the most part has been covered. Just the big thing is if anyone's here is considering this program, just make sure that you're submitting all of your college transcripts to us ahead of time. That is an admission requirement. So I'll know there's no course prerequisites that have to be in for you to apply. We do ask for you to either have ACT, SAT scores, or a degree already earned, and then have official and updated transcripts for each college you've been at. Um, and then that's just really important too, so we can see what transfers in and where you're kind of sitting um, and going from there. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the big thing. I think everything else has been covered. Great. And again, I can't see the chat. Are there any other questions that we haven't? Uh, no. Nope. Awesome. Um, I was going to ask, I don't know if there is anyone on the, on the Zoom piece right now that has gotten to this point in the program, but for the coordinated clinical experience and like uh, clinical exploration, what does, what does something like that look like? So the, the PTA program students are in their, Danny and uh, Kayla are both in their first clinical experience. They'll okay. continue with clinical experiences after um, Christmas. So they'll go on to those more in-depth clinical experiences. So right now they're spending two full days a week in the clinical setting. So that's their first opportunity to do those hands-on skills. But after Christmas, they'll be in the clinical site uh, 40 hours a week. So they'll spend their spring semester in that setting. The way that that works is they actually work with the academic coordinator of clinical education or our director of clinical education. And she um, works with them to assign each student to different sites. So there's a diverse clinical experience. So the students all total will have hopefully 
Japan, COVID, uh, four different clinical experiences. So, so maybe some outpatient, some inpatient type of rehabilitative settings, some long-term care settings, maybe some specialty, so pool therapy, or sports medicine, uh, some of those types of things. So she does the, the work with setting students up in those different places and uh, doing that. We have about 100 plus clinical sites, but not every site can take a student every, every rotation. So, you know, there's a, a lottery system we use to decide who goes where and when, as well as, as our uh, director of clinical education, coordinating all of those different aspects. So answer? for the, oh, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Um, well, I was going to say, so for the, the clinical experience and stuff like that, would you say, like you said, it's kind of a, an opportunity to experience like a variety in different settings for like physical therapy? Is that kind of the idea there? Yeah. So Danny, what setting are you in now? Um, I'm also in a, an outpatient right now. Okay, so Danny and Kayla are both in outpatient settings. And so they're gonna be working with people who are gonna to come to the facility and have their therapy there. But we also have some clinical sites that are set up more like in a, maybe like a nursing home or what we call a skilled nursing facility or a long-term care facility. Some of our students are doing uh, clinical rotations in pediatric facilities or school settings as they're able again with COVID. We also will have some settings with home care and working with patients in, in those types of environments. So the goal at the end of the program is for students to have a variety of clinical experiences and uh, be able to, to practice the skills and the, the knowledge that they've gained here on campus in the, you know, the clinical setting with real patients. So that's, that's the purpose of those different opportunities. Did that answer your question? Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. Okay. I do think the director of clinical education might be on the call. I don't know if she has anything else to add. I'm here. Oh, there she is. Um, no, I think you covered it really nicely. We do try to make sure that you get diverse experiences and um, some of our sites are outpatient and associated with a hospital setting like Sparrow or Oakland or Bronson or Borges. Um, and some of them are private PT clinics or a PT chain like Athletico or physical. Um, so we, we do try to make sure you get a variety of experiences. Um, I had a, another question about um, the clinical experience. So pretty excited. The 16th of November, I have an orientation for, um, it's the orthopedic rehab specialist in Jonesville, Michigan. I'm going to start working as like a, a, a therapy aide. Um, so I guess this is kind of jumping the gun because I'm not in the program yet, but at the point in which, you know, people are doing coordinated clinical experience and stuff like that would, um, would a place that I'm hired in at, would that be like an opportunity to do it there or is it just the specified clinics and environments that you guys have selected or how does that work? So we do, we actually have um, a clinical agreement which means we can send students to ORS and I, they're a fantastic site. And Kayla, you work for ORS, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I mean, they certainly come highly recommended from our end. Um, we do prefer not to send a student uh, to a clinical site where they currently work or have worked. It just presents some challenges. Um, it, it, sometimes there's some blurred lines about, as a student, what are your responsibilities? So even though you're an employee, should you do employee type tasks while you're a student? And we don't want anybody to get taken advantage of either way. Um, we also want to make sure that any clinical instructor you have feels free to give you feedback and that you can communicate openly and honestly with them. And, and sometimes uh, if you work there, then that creates a bit of a conflict. So we prefer not to send you to a clinic site 
where you're actually working. Now, somewhere like ORS, where they have multiple sites, um, on a case-by-case -case basis, we can look at, all right, if you're working in Jonesville, could you go to Holt or one of the Jackson sites? So we can always look at that on a case-by-case -case basis. Gotcha, that makes sense, thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, if there's no other questions, I would like to thank everybody for joining us. My students who joined us, do you guys have any other input or any other helpful suggestions? Anything that you would wish somebody would have told you before you jumped into the program? Um, the only thing I would say is whether, I mean, I guess this could actually apply outside of this as well, but especially in the program, um, your grade does not define, you know, how well you're going to succeed or, or the type of PTA you're going to be. So don't get so wrapped up on, on the grade, but get wrapped up on making sure that, you know, you have that hunger to actually aspire to become better and actually learn and grow. Um, being a, a learner is going to be super helpful in this and the grade does not define how well you're going to be as a PTA. So that's all I have to say about that. Yeah, what we really care about is that you get it, not necessarily how you get it, right, Danny? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us. And again, if there's further questions, my information is here on this slide. I know that Caleb has uh, provided his information in the chat. And um, you know, feel free to reach out to any of us. We're here to help. And uh, hopefully, you know, we see you you know, crossing the doors of our campus soon.